What's up and welcome to Nighttime in the Nerd Bar episode 79 and we're almost nice. at Comic-Con. Woo! Yeah, that's that is going to be next week. So we're not sure if we'll have an episode next week or not. It'll depend on whether or not we've recovered yeah. from Comic-Con. So follow that Twitter and we will let you know for sure. Yes, and we're going to get right into it. We have a special, we have a few special guests this evening, so stick around. Uh, we are live in the live chat. If you're watching live, join us in the chat. Ask your questions. If you're watching later, no worries. Comment down below. Uh, we'll do our introductions with our special guest as well. Go down the line. Hello, I'm Carrie Lane. I'm Katie Cullen. And our special guest. I am Bernie Bregman, the Geek Gatsby. What's up, everyone? Yes, uh, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Pleasure. I mean, it's uh, it's Comic Con week. It's friggin' exciting. It's also you know a little nerve wracking doing event production. But yeah, whatevs. Right <laughs> now, event production's uh, always a little nerve wracking. A bit. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of events, you have quite a few lined up. Tell our viewers yeah. what's going on and where can they find for more information too. Um, so our team, XLE Productions, uh, really sought to elevate pop culture nightlife. And uh, too many parties, even by studios, are like a color palette of uplighting plus pop-up banners equals theme. And we're like, no, nah, it can be better. Um, and so that's what we do. We want to give you in-world experiences, but nightlife and parties and stuff. And also, a lot of it's like just here is five hours of, you know, the DJ that we found in the local area. Like, we bounce you from DJ to live band to DJ to live band. Uh, special guests, um, you know, all sorts of fun things. And then in world, like Instagrammable, uh, immersive experiences, amazing photo ops uh, to really feel like you're a part of that, you know, that fandom, whatever it is that we chose for the theme. So we've got three parties as well as the daytime experience. Uh, the daytime experience is going to be Barbie, uh, a Malibu daydream experience. Um, so themed after your favorite, you know, doll core. Um, and then uh, the nighttime, Ready Party One has been a staple kickoff party for Comic-Con uh, since 2018. Um, and the thing that we love about that is that the lore of Ready Player One allows you to go to different planets of different themes. And so we can keep like some elements of it, but we can go explore. Last year we explored Love and Thunder. Um, this year we're exploring 8-Bit Legacy. Uh, so obviously a lot of your favorite video games. Um, and you know, lots of lots of stuff that you would expect to see from those. You'll see from those. Um, nice. And then uh, Thursday night is going to be Nostalgia Nightclub, a '90s TV takeover. Um, a lot of a lot of your favorite kids TV shows. Uh, you know, we'll have a lot of folks from Sleepy Shorts uh, and all that, and Nick Arcade, um, and and things of that nature. I was just mentioning earlier, um, I'm hanging with uh, the Flex Capacitors who are performing um, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, and then uh, a couple of the guest singers, including Danny Cooksey from Silver Shorts and Venus de Milo Thomas um, and Soraya's and a couple of folks. So we're uh, we're going to rehearse all those songs for you guys that we're going to sing in a couple of days. Sweet. Fine. And then you have another one, too. Friday night is uh, the Monsters Ball. It's going to be a uh, pop punk, emo, gothic kind of a night. Uh, there's going to be a haunted, enchanted forest. Um, lots of Wednesday, Twilight, Supernatural, that kind of thing. Wear your best black outfit. Let's go rock. Um, we've got the band Not a Phase playing that night, uh, doing a lot of, uh, you know, thirty seconds to panic at my chemical fallout muse and all that. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love rattling that off. Um, uh, DJ Sam Felt will be with us that night, um, and uh, we've got a bunch of great DJs: DJ Elliot, Atomic Blonde, Decipher It. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And the thing is, is our group and a lot of the folks we bring in, the the, the bands, uh, the DJs, it's a lot of four fans, by fans, people that are. Comic-Con goers for decades that Sweet. stood in line at town and country to get our badges, you know, yeah. stood in line for, yeah. you know, two days at Hall H, um, mm -hmm. you know, that remember when you could still get a badge the day of, because mm -hmm. the biggest thing was Kevin Smith dishing all the gossip about Hollywood. Um, yep. And, you know, uh, it was a long time ago. Um, but <laughs> so, yeah, we just, uh, we're just like everybody else, but we came up with a plan and we've been executing that plan. And it's been a fun ride. Sounds incredible. What are, are you there... most excited for people to see? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's hard to say because, you know, we come up with these big theme boards and then kind of, you know, what do we feel the most passionate about? Put some polls out and see what everybody else feels most passionate about. Um, you know, I, Ready Party One was my baby, so I'm always going to love that one. Um, but I feel like uh, our Monsters Ball Decor is going to be like 
really a whole different ball game than what we've ever done. Um, and uh, the, the Malibu Daydream experience, uh, you know, is going to be, we're transforming an entire sub training club into, you know, Malibu Beach House. It's going to be wild. That's awesome. So that sounds wild. like a blast. Yeah. Themed and then, drinks uh, and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, you'll get some complimentary stuff from Agua Frescas. Uh, you'll get nice. Castro Elian doing some really beautiful themed drinks with the bar for the different themes. Um, you know, my, I, I don't remember. They, they were kicking around some fun names. You might get the, uh, the physical challenge or, um, <laughs> you know, something like that. I That's feel like amazing. That's a physical challenge anytime you drink one. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> now, if people are a bit behind on their planning, where do they go to get tickets uh, for those different events and find more information? Made it super easy for you. PartyHQComicCon.com. Nice. That is nice. Right? And the building's already wrapped. The whole building says Party HQ across it, has QR codes. You can just walk by and scan it, and there you go. So it'll so, be real easy to find. Yeah. And uh, we're also one of the only parties left with tickets. So if you didn't make plans already, sure. like come hang with us. Yeah. Yeah. It's also kind the of, second oh. biggest venue downtown. Um, it's, yes. It's uh, beautiful. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Nice. And then people on your Instagram, you're posting some really cool prep photos of getting ready. So it really has the personal touch. Yeah. It's You know what's funny about that? So, mm. um, like prop building has never been my strong suit. Like I cosplay and stuff, but I other other people build my props for me. Um, we have an amazing team of art directors. Uh, Ailey and Ellie are, are the art directors for our group for XLE, um, and we we have like you know big picture conversations early on when we choose the themes. We're like, oh, we could do this photo op or that photo op or whatever. But I've always been a big believer that you surround yourself with talent and you get out of their way, and so. Mm. When I show up every year, I walk in and I'm like, oh, holy cow, that's amazing. Like, you know, and then there will be something that we talked about that couldn't happen and they replaced it with something that's awesome. Um, they're using my house to build this year and I'm watching it all be built and I still have no idea what's happening. <laughs> that looks I mean, amazing. What is it? Kingdom tubes and stuff. I knew what that was, but everything yeah. else, I don't really know what's happening. Nice. Uh, <laughs> well, well, tying into one of your events... <laughs> You know, it's the life of Comic Con. It's it whirlwinds all yeah. around you, and you have you, you just go with the ride. Uh, we have another guest that's tied into one of your events, and I was going to bring them on because it's uh, we got Luke Cheeseman in the house. Cheesy! What's up, everybody? Are you on the Hello. couch, please? Um, I'm in Jim's uh, work basement. area. Wow, well, he's getting out of the Jim has you in the show. basement. Yeah, yeah. Jim, Jim in the basement. I was going to say, was he coming on later, or is you, you going to be our rep for the day yeah i'm i'm filling in for him right now as our, our show will start here at oh, okay. eight o'clock yes yeah. ah okay so people can go hop over to theirs later as well you can say hello um, there we go hello, hello. <laughs> hey, these these are jim's crutches that he yeah. hopefully oh. won't have to use for a couple so of time. i'm on crutches oh, no. right now i'm having a hard time getting around oh, no <laughs> are you doing oh, okay God, be great <laughs> jim tried to do karate anyways no um <sighs> So as you know, we, we have a, a show that's starting in about 20 minutes. I'm trying to get that ready, but I did want to jump in. Carrie is like our favorite. We love Carrie. So anytime she asks you to do something, you just say, when oh, and where you. do I show up? Well, I Jeez, watched man, Bernie you on your Brown show, him? too. Did he try to kick a football and you Charlie Browned him? <laughs> Almost it sounded like. He on can their kick story. this high, but he can't kick this high. Oh, when we won. When it's two inches that makes the difference. It was after a Seinfeld trivia night. And... We, which we won. Which we won. And then to impress the ladies, Luke goes, Jim could kick this high. The rest is embarrassing history. <laughs> yeah, he, he wound up in urgent care or oh boy. somewhere the next day. Well, the tie-in here of why I was bringing them on as well, because <laughs> you have Power Rangers, which goes to nostalgia. So, Bernie, what was it like? Can, hey, guys, can I tell you something? Can we break some news? Can we break some news? Okay, sure. Absolutely. I just got a, some information. I guess it's not huge news, but Disney's bringing Haunted Mansion down to Comic-Con for an early screening. Yeah. All right. Is that cool? Very cool. Yeah. So and be well walk, the watching the streets because there's going to be a lot of hitchhiking ghosts around. Are they going to follow you home? Let's mm. hope so. Or uh, hitchhiking Jim since he's on crutches. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but anyways, I am going to jump off here. But Luke, is, you're in capable hands because Luke has been working actually with Bernie on some very cool promotions, man. 
Awesome. Yes. Well, okay, thank you for stopping by, Jim. <laughs> Feel better. <laughs> So, Bernie, I know you got to get going as well, but uh, tell us about the tie-in with the 90s, and uh, you have other special guests for that. You mentioned some of them, uh, but then I think the tie-in was Power Rangers as well. Yep. Um, well, Luke could definitely run down the, the Power Ranger list, but there's like half a dozen or more uh, Power Rangers that will be hanging out at the party with everybody. Uh, I know Walter's coming, um, and uh, uh, you guys have an anniversary panel that you guys are doing. Um, yeah, 30th anniversary right before. Yep. Yep. And then roll right up to the party. Um, and yeah, Power Rangers is a perfect fit. We're doing 90s TV nostalgia. That's that's when, you know, America first got their uh, taste of Power Rangers. So uh, that's going to be awesome. Nice. Having having Walter, one of the originals, is, is great. Um, so that's going to be super fun. Uh, we've also got um, Stephen Kramer Glickman from uh, Big Time Rush, who's going to be singing with the band. Uh, Danny Cooksey singing with the band. Uh, and um, uh, Phil Moore, host of Nick Arcade, is going to host tonight. I get a night off of hosting. Nice. <laughs> Great. There you go. Means you get to be a fan and enjoy. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be singing with the band because it's like my new oh, favorite there you thing go. to do. Uh, that's awesome. All right. But that'll be my only responsibility. Otherwise, I'll just be enjoying the party. There you I, go. I feel so, that goes hand in hand. You get to be enjoying while singing, and then, you know, it's all part of the experience. Oh, so say, can, you, can you give us a preview of your set list? Oh, okay. Um, I would have to access the phone that I'm on, talking to you on. So oh. I can't, like, quote, quote. Um, but I know that, so so it's tailored 80s for uh, Ready Party One. All right. Uh, 90s for, duh, uh, for Nostalgia Nightclub. Yeah. Um, and then Not A Phase is doing the emo set on Friday. I can nice. uh, rattle off a handful of songs. So I know for the 90s night, um, we'll get the Pokemon theme song. Um, Classic. I'll be doing uh, My Own Worst Enemy by Lit, Machine Head by Bush, yes, and yes. Uh, Full of Art of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Yes. Um, I know uh, Danny Cooksey's doing Devil Went Down to Georgia. I remember seeing that on there. I can't remember the rest of that stuff. Um, wow. They'll, they'll, oh, I think all the ladies are going to do Wanna Be by Spice Girls. So like, uh, oh, Dan, yes. Yes. Yeah, Thomas, Good and Alyssa Reyes, um, and whoever else. Uh um, what else is on there? God, it's so much, so much stuff. I think we're, I think, I think there's a Limp Biscuit song, which they've never done before, but it just works for nineties. Right. Um, yeah. I think break stuff might be my way. Oh, there. break stuff's good. Um, sabotage by BC boys. I think, mm. um, Oh, uh, the bad touch by, mm -hmm. um, uh, why am I blanking right now? Yeah. Bloodhound gang. That's bloodhound Blood gang. gang. gang yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, and then, uh, for the eighties one, um, let's see, there'll be uh, Sweet Child of Mine is on that list. Um, I'm doing One of Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi and nice. uh, Rebel Yell by Billy Idol. All um, right. Uh, yeah, there's, oh God, it's going to be, it's going to be a wild set. I know for um, the Friday night show, you'll get like uh, Helena and I'm Not Okay and um, uh, Thanks for the Memories. Um, I'm going to do Miss Murder by AFI. Um, All right. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, so a lot of that stuff. All right. Quick question then. When you're doing a cover, do you try to give it a little bit of your own spin because it's that uncanny valley of being exactly the same or a little bit different? Um, you know, it's funny. So some of these songs we live with for, like, you know, so long. And, yeah. And like, um, when you're learning to sing and learning, like, well, my voice is not John Bon Jovi's voice, right? Um, and how to do it, but like, I remember it a very specific way and it's hard mm. to detach your muscle memory from that. Um, and so I really pushed to learn how John does it. Um, but I misremembered some of the cadence, um, when mm. I remembered Miss Murder. And so I went back to watch, uh, uh, Havoc performing it. Um, and I'm like, I sing this differently. Why do I do that? Um, and I just, I hold notes a little longer than he does um the the original recording of that song is actually uh doesn't modulate as much and i like kind of play more with that um and it's just how i remembered the song i don't know why actually i think if i'm not mistaken my first exposure to that song might have been one of the guitar heroes um same honestly yep um, three but, yeah hey deep cut mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so that's uh, cool it might just be that it was in there funny and that was my first exposure to it yeah. But I've been watching all of them perform to be like, okay, you know, what am I going to do here and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's a fun, it's a really fun journey. All right. 
Carrie, you're muted. Uh oh, Carrie's muted. I know, right? I was typing. I have a very loud keyboard, so I was trying to do it. With, yeah, anyway. She's so like, can you pull it. off the scream on Miss Murder? That, yes. That I know. Okay. I a know. Little, little inside baseball, and then, uh, and then I'll stop talking. Um, but Let's I'm hear passionate it. about this. So when you see people do, like, rock scream, you either are incredibly unhealthy up in your throat, and then mm -hmm. you can only sing for a handful of years in your toast, um, or there is vocal techniques with glottal fry and creating a feedback loop on a microphone. When you want to do that scream the correct way, the healthy way, you actually grip the microphone in such a way that you create an echo chamber with your hands and a tiny little peep hole with your two thumbs, or you can wrap your fingers around it and, and, and kind of go through the peephole, put your lips right up on it, and you just get into that uh, glottal fry, and the huh. air pushing through creates what's called a silent scream. Um, nice. And that's yep. how you do that thing. No, and I that. absolutely yep. nail that scream in a healthy nice. way. Yeah, because it's nice. not actually very difficult. Great uh, for right. Deftones songs too. Yep. I was starting up real quick. One of the uh, people in our live chat, Gigadar, goes, "Free bird." I'm a free bird. Yeah. Uh, well, you have a lot more. You have a lot of prep still ahead of time. But anything else you'd like to add before uh, Bernie that you sign up? Sign. I off. can't freaking wait to see all of you guys. Comic Con is the most special time. Yes. Uh, and it's just going to be, and it, look, this is going to be a weird one. We all know this, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So at least we can keep something consistent, which is mega awesome in-world parties with great live music. Uh, and it's going to be a ton of fun. And I just, I can't wait to see everybody. Awesome. Well, thank right. you again we'll see so you much down for there. joining you. Yes. Yeah. Have a good one, guys. Have a good night. Alrighty. Thank you. Peace. Love you, bud. Peace. Yep. All right. Oh, wait. Ah, sorry, uh -oh. Katie. Whoa. I was, oh, whoa. I was hoping to move back. him ah! from the stream. And ah! then I moved all the things. So we get a, we get a Luke sandwich. Well, it works because it's Cheeseman, so it's a cheese sandwich. But it, I mean, given how hot it is in Southern California, uh, it's a grilled melt, cheese sandwich. It's a yeah. grilled cheese sandwich, yes. Uh, well, we have one of the con guys. So we have the con, we have con guy. <laughs> uh, Luke, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell us one of the cool things – uh, that you'll be up to down at Comic-Con. Yeah, Cheeseman here. Uh, did the Con Guy show and the Scare Guy with Carrie for a long time, but I'm one of the founding members of that. Also do a lot of their social media pages. And also on Con Guy, like a lot of us are kind of industry people with a lot of the stuff that's going on. Like me and Jim are WGA, uh, Ben's a SAG actor and all that. So, And Carrie's also a filmmaker, producer, and director as well. So uh, we'd love to kind of throw that element in. But um, so that's also great with because we're fans. We go down to the cons, but then also we can kind of network as filmmakers as well. So there's, you know, a lot of different things that we'll do kind of both both things like there's writing panels we can go to or there's, you know, the we'll be missing a lot of the Hall H stuff we normally get due to the strike and other things. But I think, you know studios hopefully will still be releasing releasing trailers and there'll be other stuff still yeah. going on i know there's the jurassic park 30th anniversary kind of pop-up mm -hmm. stuff and there's a lot of different things that you'll still get those elements and all that just unfortunately yeah we're, we'll be missing some of those bigger panels but we are putting on one as the con guy we're doing the power rangers uh 30 years anniversary celebration the panel is called the official power rangers 30th anniversary celebration and that's thursday july 20th at 6 45 and room 6a so that will be um going on for probably about 45 minutes to an hour but we usually try to allow time for people to ask questions as well and our own ben cleaver will be doing the moderating for that which will be awesome and some of the rangers and that we're going to awesome have on too. that yep. yeah so we're, we're lucky we have a lot of people from some of the older shows like Power Rangers in Space, Power Ranger Turbo, and there's a chance Walter may stop by, say hello, but because of him having the current show on Netflix and just you know stuff right. going on with the SAG right. after strike, it's just not in his best interest to be like officially on the panel, but he'll be yeah. still attending, you know, the parties and the things we we're talking about with Bernie. So he'll be there. Um, and then some of the other Rangers we will have is Patrick David, Roger Velasco, Christopher Cayman Lee, Dwayne Cameron, Selwyn Ward, and Blake Foster. And a lot of these guys are kind of newer, but a lot of them know each other through Turbo and Space. So 
it'll be a good one to especially ask some questions and you know they worked with some of the ogs you know like jason david frank so i'm sure we'll hopefully pay a good kind of tribute and maybe share some memories of him and what he's you know done for that franchise and there's been some crossover with these guys on more recent stuff too which Mm -hmm. is kind of cool that there's this gigantic power ranger universe and you know there is some crossover so and the fan films have become such kind of a big thing one of them unfortunately got kind of a sierra hannah can't show up for that as a sag you know actress but she was there to promote the white dragon which is the jason david frank like fan feature that was made but it's interesting because those can be made kind of a little more in an adult way so the people that were kind of fans of them i think it can appeal to more of an older audience so i think Mm, there's a mm -hmm. lot of room with these 30 years of rangers and if you know netflix or someone will be like hey let's start creating kind of our own multiverse or do something kind of with some of this because i think a lot of adults if it's done kind of in a different way you know it could it could appeal but it's st- you get still such a wide range of people that show up for these panels from like young to old it's i was gonna of- say tell people they need to line up early your panel last year with power rangers because you had yeah. was it last year or special edition because you guys had one that was very yeah. full yeah it was last year it, yeah we, yeah comic-con we had a pretty good attendance for that one and we're in 6a which is one of those rooms that does tend to kind of either have a line or fill up and with a lot of the dropping out of studios and this being, you know, something that you know, some celebrities are still coming to that'll be good for. And we'll also be promoting on social media, the signing times of everybody. So all the Rangers that are attending, will be doing some signings at some parts. And then Walter has been posting his more directly, I think on his social media of work. And he'll again, be. that'll be on Thursday at mm-hmm. 6 45 PM, which yeah. then go over to the party afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Bernie was hopefully talking about the nostalgia nightclub party, the 90, yes. 90s thing. It's going to be yep. totally like 90s. I think they might even do s- some sort of sliming. I think he might have told us before or there might ooh, be some sort of. I think of... he was thinking about it yeah. on the Amazing. when I was watching. He was like, "Ooh, how can we do that and okay, not like destroy they... the property or something? Yeah. Like, yeah. Not clean up and... Maybe, maybe yeah. not. But yeah. I'm sure they'll have all sorts of nostalgic type things going there. Yeah. So. We'll have uh, seven rangers there for people to hang out with, and he'll probably have it sounds like several other guests. But it's it's cool, and there's all those other nights going on, so there's a chance we may try to kind of bring some other people in as mm-hmm. well. You know, if they're still around, maybe they'll pop by the parties because we should be able to yeah. kind of get them on the list. Nice, yeah. And then one other, other oh. panel I'd mm-hmm. like to promote, and I, I think the name might have changed. Normally, it's full time creative on a part time schedule. Yeah, thank uh, you. Jim I was just gonna ask. I'm like, you guys will, do that panel too, right? Yeah, yeah, he'll be there on Sunday doing that. And usually, it's the last panel of the day, so I assume it's probably at four o'clock and okay. one of those um, like twenty three A B kind of type rooms. I, yeah, I, I apologize. I don't know the exact room or time, but he'll be on that. And I think they did slightly alter the name, but it's a great place to again network learn kind of like how we do even as podcasters and things how do we do this on a part-time schedule as well as do our other jobs and make sure that you're making time for all of that actually jim can tell you <laughs> a little more about the panel no, yeah, jim, tell us about your Hello. panel you're I'm like my ears are burning <laughs> no i'm actually watching the podcast it's really cool this is like your 14th year 15th year doing this panel nice and Nice, um, congratulations. They changed the name to Strategies and Creativity, which is really cool because oh, they're kind yeah. of expanding a little bit. But it's still the same type of stuff about people who want to go into the creative fields, how to make that you're – you only have a part-time – I got to say Right. That. I'm hobbling yeah, around this like yeah. – <laughs> <laughs> What's cool is um, – Take a breather. For, yeah. <laughs> no, it's – it's, I'll just whisper stuff in his ears for a minute. Get out of here. <laughs> no, it's, it's Strategies for Creativity. It's, it's for people who, like you guys, have basically creative careers and you wanted that to be your full-time thing, but you also have a day job and how to balance mm-hmm. the two. It's a great panel. They are giving away what, 30 Wacom tablets for your computers. Hey. The, wow. Okay. And they usually give away Adobe Suites and stuff. There's a lot Dang. of stuff you get just for coming to the panel. So That's cool. Of of value. Yeah. I mean, I am out of breath. I'm just so hobbling around on this leg. As we, but anyway, that's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Wacom's are like industry tech. If you're an artist, that is a yep. big deal. And an Adobe subscription is 
my day job is IT and I manage our company's Adobe subscriptions. That is a chunk of change. Yeah, the, Those are the, incredible prizes. Perhaps the biggest audience for the panel are definitely um, comic book and graphic novel creators. And mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. have a, a networking yeah. time for artists to meet writers, to meet letterers and put everything together. So. And yeah, I remember uh, attending that and people also shared business cards amongst panel, like the people who attended yep. the panel. It was very uh, friendly atmosphere and everybody connecting with each other, which was really cool. Yep. Bring your business cards. It's going to be great. Nice. Uh, anything else you'd like to add before you have to sign up for your show? Yeah. Yes. Uh, listen, this has been so great. And uh, Carrie, I can't wait to see you down there. And I am so sorry. Um, I haven't. I, think, I don't think I've met you in person before, but I can't wait. Are you going down as well? Briefly. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I, I probably have because Carrie makes I feel a way briefly, of making sure we all maybe meet Maybe at each other. WonderCon. Or WonderCon, least, yeah. yes. But a, a <laughs> lot a happened lot at WonderCon. On, yeah. So <laughs> Hopefully I'm Katie. We'll see you guys at some of the parties. You know, the Bernie parties are going to be great. The panel yeah, we're Power Rangers is, is going to be great. And we just want to, we do have, and I'm sure Luke covered this. Um, we know with the strike and everything going on, we're being really sensitive. We are talking about yes. the past. We're talking about the 30 years of history. We will not be addressing current projects or anything coming up. And we want to make sure we stay in solidarity with the WD, WGA after and no WGA slash SAG after. There's a lot yes. of letters there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! It's been awesome being on here. I can't wait to see you guys down yeah. at Comic Con. Thank Looking you for joining us. All right. All right. And then Wait, uh, where where can people find you online uh, and then follow watch your show later, too? Yeah. If you guys want to check out our show, just go to theconguy.com. It's right there on the front page right now. That's the easiest place to find us. Luke's got the shirt on. Or you can follow us on Instagram at theconguy. And we hope you guys do. Um, people are texting us. They don't see us in the studio. So we got to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining. Have a good show. See Love you. you guys. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Um, and our other special guest. Hello. Brought you in right away there, Allison. <laughs> Uh, let's change this banner. So we all the guests this evening. Um, everybody, this is Allison, uh, who I met through Crazy for Comic Con uh, many years ago and yeah. stayed in touch. Uh, Allison, why don't you introduce your Yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> please introduce yourself and let people know you're doing, uh, you'll be on a panel at Comic Con. Tell us more. Yes, yes. my name's Allison Lair. Um, I will be doing a panel with Brian Weiss on Thursday at 6 30. It will be spirituality and pop culture. Um, I am very honored to have been asked to be a part of this. Uh, I'm very excited. Our friend Tony Kim will also be on this panel. Um, so it's shaping up to, to be really great. Uh, Brian has brought in uh, people of kind of all religions and cultures, and we'll each be taking a few separate talking points and uh, talking about some different fun spiritual slash religious uh, things in pop culture. Cool. Okay. Yeah. That does uh, sound fun. I was going to say, yeah, you should I'm also excited. Say yeah. I'm excited. I think it'll be great. Um, I... Finally, I'm like, oh, yes, my nerdiness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my obsessions have come to something. Like your nerd no. flag fl fly high. Yes. yes. It's yes. that Venn diagram overlap. You're right. smack in the middle and it's yeah. great. Like okay. how yeah. frequently do you really get to um, talk about the things that you're super passionate about on a platform like that? Yeah, um, exactly. Honestly, I was not planning on coming to San Diego this year. And mm. um, then... Uh, just the very, very beginning of June, Brian said, hey, our panel was chosen. And I went, oh, well, I guess I have to figure out how to get there now. So um, I'm excited to finally be coming back to see you again, Carrie. It's been, I think, since 2018. Yeah. So, a been a time. minute yeah <laughs> yeah um i'm also going to be there representing the all things oz museum nice. um i want to do some things to push the museum i am their uh, new manager as of about six months ago and um as you can imagine we <laughs> we do deal with all things oz um so i'm going to be doing a couple of little uh, loot drops around town nice. and yeah uh, I thought it would be fun to kind of get the the West Coast involved in some of our uh, yeah. um, New York stuff. Um, and, yeah. You know, Oz is fantasy too. So uh, most of the nerdy people are enjoyed, you know, yeah, they enjoy that. So, yes. Yeah. Hopefully. And so many of us grew up on that. Yes. 
Yes. And she has a dog named Toto, which is of adorable. Course. Little dog. Of course. I do. He's nesting right now. <laughs> is he a little um, Scotty? He is he is a um, Yorkshire Terrier. So okay. in the movie, he was a Cairn Terrier, but in the books, he's written more like a Yorkshire. Um, mm -hmm. And so one of my goals was always to get a Cairn and name him Toto, but um, Cairns were really kind of hard to come by in Ohio. Yes. So um, you know what? If a, if a Yorkshire is good enough for L. Frank Baum, it's good enough for me. And yeah. yeah, he's the, he's the greatest guy. So um, I'm in a, in a transitional period right now. I flew, I, I drove back to Ohio so that I could fly from Cleveland out in the morning. So um, Fair. I'm, at my, I'm at my parents' house. I don't have my normal setup and stuff, but. Yay. Well, yeah. that's great. You yeah, can right. still join. I was like, yes, we need yeah. to figure this out. <laughs> yes. Yes. I haven't done anything like this in a long time. So it's a, uh, it's a breath of fresh air to come back and be surrounded by my people. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the panel too, what kind of preparation and what is your process like getting ready to be on a panel, especially a panel where it's spirituality and pop culture? Uh, Cause I feel like you'd want to cover a lot, but you know, you don't want to get too much information. Like you don't want to overwhelm yeah. people. Like how do you keep that right. focus? Um, well, <laughs> for I was me, like multifaceted I mean, this question. Is, this is my <laughs> first San Diego Comic Con panel. Like I've done nice. other panels, but this Congrats. is my first. Yeah. So, um, to a degree, I don't entirely know what to expect, and uh, yes. and I'm just hoping that I prepared um, in the best way possible. Um, now we all have three separate topics. We probably will all get to two. Um, we have the third sort of for backup. Um, but basically I took two of the things that I have been, uh, kind of obsessed with from a very young age. Um, so I don't know if I'm, if I'm supposed to say this, it might be a spoiler, but I'm going to be talking on the spirituality of Wizard of Oz first and foremost. Uh, cool. but secondly, I will be talking on the spirituality of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Nice. So, right. Right. Um, yeah. so, you know, some of that is can be religion mm -hmm. some of it is not um yeah. and you know i think uh because brian has gotten a diverse group of people um it will be really neat to see all the different perspectives that everybody has um mm -hmm. I, i'm looking forward to it and i haven't heard other people's talking points so while i know sort of what they're going to be talking about i don't know um like which little ways they're going out with it and uh, what they're speaking on uh, exclusively. So um, yeah, it'll, it'll be exciting. But my process was kind of just deep diving and going, you know, what do I love and what moments did I take from that, that, um, mm. that, uh, that really resonate with me, I guess. All right. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Well, I was gonna say with Brian and Tony on the panel, you should be in great hands. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Brian, he's a great guy and he has a pretty, pretty decent background of stuff, though this is his first uh, Comic-Con panel as well. That's exciting. And then, right. you know, Tony, he's, he's an old pro at all of it. So hopefully they can kind of guide me through. <laughs> I think it'll be right. fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. And is there anything else you're looking forward to being back at Comic-Con as well? Oh my gosh, I'm just excited to be on the con floor, uh, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, you know, it's obviously bittersweet with the SAG after a strike happening, um, but that really means that it'll be able to go back to the, you know, early Comic Con vibe um, yes. where it's really about comics. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pumped about that. And I think that because there won't be so many people in Hall H, that means that they'll be on the con floor. So this is um, a very valid point. I think it'll be yeah. really good for the vendors. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, and just seeing people, you know, um, honestly, I haven't really done conventions much since COVID. Um, sure. so it'll, it'll be really nice to just kind of be back with the con family and, yeah. um, and share some of that love. Uh, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. There's always something special about 
going to cons just in terms of the mass of humanity and everyone being there for the same reason. There's yeah. common ground with everyone there. You just have to find it. Yes. you. I, it definitely feels, I mean, even though there are so many people and it can be really overwhelming, it feels like home, you know, you're yeah. in sort of mm -hmm. your safe space and you're surrounded by like-minded people. And I think that's just a really important thing for a lot of us. You know, we yeah. need to have that place that we can go that we feel like, oh, okay, <laughs> we can reset now. Yeah. yeah. And be able it's... to like be, be able to express yourself fully, not worrying about like whatever. It's like, okay, I just Absolutely. get to relax and be who I want to be. Yeah. yeah. It's the right. sort of place where you can make friends in line, make friends with the people sitting next to you in the panel yeah. audience, friends mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes, absolutely. And, and then, you know, there's all of the offsite events. So you meet random people on those mm -hmm. um, or just hanging out in like the hotel bar or lobby. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's friends everywhere in San Diego <laughs> during this week. So I'm oh, yeah. very pumped for that. I can't wait to meet new people. I can't wait to see the people that I haven't seen for a long time. Um, I think ultimately it's just going to be a really good time for me to kind of breathe a little bit um you know it's it's very easy to get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day work stuff and uh yeah so this will be a nice time to kind of reset and uh embrace yeah. my my nerdiness for a little while yeah nice that's um, always a fun thing to do where, where can people find you online or where can they be up to date on the, you were saying the different drops around town. That sounds very exciting. Yes. So where can people know you, more information? You can find me um, on uh, Instagram or threads as anxiety.ally, which is A-L-I, or Twitter at A-M Lair, that's L-E-H-R. Um, and then all things Oz Museum, you can search us. We are um, ATO underscore museum at uh, Twitter and threads, I think is just all things Oz. So um, yeah, I'll definitely be posting um, the all things Oz content on my personal pages as well. So um, they'll kind of be going back and forth between the two. Um, but that way, at least everybody should be able to keep track of what's happening and where the drops will be. So All right. right. And anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's a lot. I'm, I'm no, it's still, fabulous. I I'm yeah. still yeah. not entirely sure I'm ready, um, even though I'm flying out. You're ready. Us, so it's no one's ever ready. It's fine. Yeah. Right? Ready as the you'll two, ever the be. The two completely opposite. She's like, you're ready. And I'm like, no one is. <laughs> well, it's the ready as you'll ever be, you know. It's been that's so fair. long that I was not entirely sure what I was doing. And so I went, mm. I don't know what to pack. I'll just pack everything. So I packed it's absolutely everything I could think of to come to Ohio. And then now I'm sort of going back uh, through and repacking um, to make sure I have just what is necessary. Yeah. As long as you've got your badge, you're good. Yes. yes. I'm picking that up there. Thank you. Okay. okay. Nice. I was going to say, I'm like, comfortable <laughs> shoes. Uh, yes. And then, like, sunscreen, yeah, water bottle. Sanitizer. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Deodorant. And all those things. Yeah. yeah. And sanitizer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Checklist. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yep. Uh, not sponsored Bed Bath & Beyond was selling the little ones for a dollar, by the way. Just popped into the mall the other day and I bought like four. Okay. Yeah, it's like the last few days of their semi-annual sale. So if you I want hand sanitizer, it's a good time. Yes. They were doing, their sign I saw was like back to, get, you know, getting ready for back to school, which I'm like, whoa, that is so early. What are you talking about? Yes. Um, but summer. Gotta have a theme. Yes. What, yeah. What is that about? I was just out today and all of the binders and stuff are out. Some ready. kids are like oh. early August, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rough. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, that's still <laughs> summer. Yeah. I was like, school is September to June. Like, yeah. what are we talking about here? <laughs> Absolutely. I think I always had late August. Mm. <sighs> yeah, September. Like right after Labor Day. It's yeah. Kind of, but yeah. <laughs> You're like, mm -hmm. I'm a working stiff now. We don't get vacations. I know. I'm like, summer? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Oh, oh summer when it's hot. I yeah. <laughs> well, weather looks to be pretty decent, so that's good. It's yeah, awesome. like high of 80 in San Diego, thank Which God. It was bad. 88 in the valley today. <laughs> yeah. 
hopefully we'll we'll continue to have those sort of uh yes. ocean breezes and everything mm -hmm. will be nice Oh, yeah. I just I want like the nice mild temperature at nighttime so you can go out looking cute but not have to wear 50 layers, you know, yeah. so it yeah. looks like it should be that too. Yes. So here's hoping. Here's hoping. <laughs> well, You're thank you. Cute. Oh, thank you. I was gonna say you're she fabulous did. too. I'm like we take we need to get some pictures together and show off our, show off the fit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to do more uh, more model training with me. So yes, I don't we'll be like do here, here we pose and like ah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, thank you again for joining us. It was fun to hear about your thank panel. You so everybody, uh, tell everybody again when and where it is. It is uh, Thursday at 6.30, room 29 C and D. All right. All right. Yes. Yay. Well, thanks. And we'll see you down there. Yes. We'll see you there. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. I was going to push the button. I'm like, nope, everybody is very responsible and got it together. <laughs> Thank you. So you might need to, I think those were two panels that were both on Thursday at six ish. So, uh, well, you know, it is divide I just and conquer. panel hop, you know, it's mm -hmm. one, they go one and then the other. Um, Thank you so much to all of our special guests who joined us. I hope that's getting all of you excited for Comic Con. If you haven't made your decision on what you're doing or, you know, if you're open to suggestion, got a lot yeah. of fun stuff back there which i'm like wait get back to our there we go um yes. yeah i'm very excited for the events I, I know there has obviously been shifting in panels and what's available just stay up to yes. date on uh what people uh like comic con is posted online and that's why you should have like panel option one two three four like have your options yeah. ready so in case yeah. something happens um and obviously there's the exhibit hall which I'm excited. Always, that's always exciting to check oh out. Oh my god, Artist I love Alley. the hall. <laughs> you know we promote Artist Alley. Oh my show. god, I love the hall. I love the Artist Alley. Mm. I'm I am definitely a crush of humanity person when the air conditioning is working. Yes, I always got to put that caveat there after the like, uh, uh, Anime uh, Expo Artist Alley yeah. every yeah. time. But they also put their Artist Alley in a parking garage, which is yeah, not necessarily no. best practices. Yes. Uh, Comic-Con, their Artist Alley is in the Expo Hall. It's at yeah. a certain end of it. So it's yeah. all still good. Yes. Um, I do want to touch on this because it was mentioned several times. Uh, yes. As we've said, the WGA strike is still going on. And SAG-AFTRA has joined them on strike. SAG has called for a non-promotional strike, which means that SAG-AFTRA personnel are not promoting any works that they're in. So if you heard about the cast of Oppenheimer leaving the red carpet to go join the SAG strike, that's part of why. This is why you won't see celebrities, you won't see the um, actors at red carpets, and it is recommended that they not attend Comic-Con at all. They are more than welcome to attend in a fan capacity. They can't promote any struck works. So anything owned by the AMPTP, which I did look this up, and it's essentially all the big studios and all the streamers. It's the huge players in Hollywood. So that's why there are panel cancellations at Comic-Con. That's why no one's posting on social media about the things they're in, because they're on strike. Additionally, you won't see any of your larger influencers making those same posts because influencers who are in SAG or looking to gain SAG membership are not doing paid promotions with studios. So you're not going to see a lot of that on social media. You're not going to see a lot of that going on because of that strike. We do stand in solidarity with SAG-AFTRA and with the WGA. Um, they have not called for a boycott yet. They are not asking people to cancel their streaming services. They actually want people to watch the stuff you like, watch things on those streaming services, because one of the larger arguments against them is that streaming is unpredictable and unreliable. And if you show a consistency with, I am enjoying this media on my streaming service, that goes against that argument. So they're not asking for streaming cancellations. They're not asking you to not go to the movies or not watch the shows you like. They're saying that actually watch those shows you like, go to those movies. It does show support for the writers and the actors and shows that you appreciate work that cannot be replaced by AI. So yeah, do the Barbie Oppenheimer double feature. Yeah, watch all of Good Omens 2 the day that it drops. It's going to be some buck wild time zones for some people. But yeah, sure, watch it like three times over that weekend. Enjoy your media. Support the strikes. Yes, we're all in this together. Yes. 
Uh, and then if you also want some more information to uh, uh, the con guys, John, uh, Jim and Luke, there we go. Con mm -hmm. guys, Jim and Luke. They also talked about one of their previous episodes as well. Cause both of they just joined the writer's guild. And it's like, nice. Oh, the timing. <laughs> um, but it's like, yay, congrats. You joined though. Um, but they, yeah, they yeah. talked about it in their experience as well. And it was good. They, you know, gave that disclosure too. So, yeah. um, that's and make a, sure. Yes, and make sure that any news you get has come straight from the guilds, has come from the WGA mm -hmm. or SAG-AFTRA, mm -hmm. because there is a lot of misinformation yeah. and misunderstandings yep. happening. Yep. And so it's very good to double check your sources, double check. I believe it's SAGAFTRAStrike.org is the website. And yeah, just make sure you double check your sources, make sure that if you're going to do something in solidarity, that it's something that's supported. And if you want to donate, there is a workers fund that supports people whose careers have been, whose jobs have been affected by the WGA and SAG after strikes. So your set dressers, your production people, your people who aren't in those specific unions, but still can't work because production is shut down. There is a fund that helps them. There is a fund that helps writers. There is a fund that helps get groceries for writers and actors. Like there are lists of official funds. They are on that site. Uh, hilariously, some of the best information I've seen on the strike has been Neil Gaiman's Tumblr <laughs> and Adam Conover's everything. Oh, I yeah, his videos so, are fabulous. I'm like, Thank yeah, they're yes. they are both fonts of solid information on the strikes. So yeah. if you're looking for something and you can't find it on the site, it's entirely possible that one of the two of them have covered it. So yeah, um, we stand in solidarity with striking workers, those two guilds, the hotel strike. We stand in solidarity with unions, unions good, unionizing good. Yeah. Uh, I saw a TikTok that's like uh, people using a, a soundbite from the nanny, but it's and like, but still attending yeah. a thing. And it's like, there's an episode clip where I'm like, no, no, she doesn't cross the picket line either. So yeah. Yeah, there's. I've seen that going around where the character yeah. refuses to cross a hotel worker picket line. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, you don't cross the lines. Yeah. You don't do that. Uh, so yeah, stay up to date. Uh, and again, official sources. Uh, we will still be going down to Comic Con, so make sure yes. to be following us. Let me find yes. our. There it is. NTATMB, also Fanversation. Uh, yes. We shall see what kind of interviews and stuff we get, but we mm -hmm. will bring bringing you something. Uh, and then yes. also stay tuned because we're not exactly sure if we'll be doing show on Monday because it depends how exhausted we are from Comic Con. <laughs> we um, might be in a puddle on the floor. Yeah, it's fine. But yeah, That's, stay tuned was, with all that. Um, but we also have, I feel that's it. Uh, is there anything else you were excited about that you want people to know about for Comic-Con or I feel, I feel we've covered the main big bases. Yeah, mostly just, you know, comfortable shoes. Uh, make sure that you keep track of your badge. It costs a pretty penny to replace it. Yeah, and not, mm -hmm. last time I had to replace one, they would only do it once. Mm -hmm. So like, that is definitely something where if you need to put, extra reinforcement to make sure the top doesn't mm. rip out from your lanyard do it do whatever you need to do to make sure that you keep your hands on that badge it's very important yes uh yeah comfy shoes bring a water bottle mm -hmm. refill that water bottle hail hydration seriously hydrate or dihydrate it is too dang warm out here and it won't be as warm uh, in san diego but you still need to drink water it'll it be will humid be humid too. yes it's a different bring kind your of yeah Bring yeah. your snacks. You can't survive on soda and candy. So right. make sure you have like actual good snacks. Your granola bars, your mixed nuts, your whatever. A light sweater because even though it's hot outside, some of those panels can be super AC'd. Oh my like God, God, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's so. basically the same concepts that we did for Anime yeah. Expo, but writ even larger because San Diego is huge. Yeah. And yeah, you were absolutely right about A plan, B plan, C plan, D plan, and then also occasionally be feel, be willing just to drop everything and then go to one of the uh, the setups outside or to just yep. walk around the hall. My favorite. And the setups outside yep. don't require con badges. Mm -hmm. you, if you're in San Diego and don't have a badge, you can just go. I like having a plan, but I also have a lot of go with the flow too, because maybe you go over here yeah. and then you make friends or you see other friends and then you go there and then you, yeah. it's like that have a more flexible 
mindset and pack your patience. That's the other big one too. But um, sometimes yeah. you have your night planned out and then you wind up drunk in a candy store with your friends at 2 a.m. anyody and it's a blast. <laughs> I feel like I've done Ghirardelli late night as well. Uh, they stay open pretty late. That one's fun. Ice cream yeah. super late night. And the late night pizza. Yeah. Uh, we can go on on that. Oh, there's, there's an Irish yeah. pub down there that has box tees, which are basically potato pancakes and Ooh. the best chocolate cherry martini I have had Ooh. in my life. Nice. That is my end of Comic Con tradition is eating okay. there. And getting boxies and a chocolate cherry martini. So we'll see if that holds true again this year. We'll see if they're even still open. It's been forever since I've that been. That too. It's like, yeah. what's still there? Yeah. Look, they closed uh-huh. Wet Willies and I was devastated. So. Yes. Who knows? Uh, well, that's it for right now for our Comic-Con stuff. But we still do have some Overwatch news. And that will be our last topic for the evening. <sighs> oh, it was oh, do it's tell. a rough weekend to be me. Uh, <laughs> me specifically, with these specific teams that I am a fan of, it has been a rough one. Which is to say, the Outlaws lost both of their matches, and it's not like it's not like these were throwaway matches. One of them was against Boston, and at one point, the casters were talking about a good amount of Boston's success comes from the fact that Decay is able to make these absolutely crazy plays and that they would not be nearly so on top of things without him, which is true. The days that Decay is off his game are the days when Boston loses. Like everyone on that team is capable of a deadlift, but he's the one that pulls them out. So lost to Boston, lost to Florida, Neither of those are particularly terrible. Like, again, they're two very strong teams, but it's still a very rough weekend. And then if you're a Gladiators fan and you walked into not one but two rivalry matches and dropped them both, one of which to a team where it was their first win this season... It's also a rough time to be. It's the it's the Sadiators meme coming back out. The first was the I believe Friday lost to San Francisco. This give me the previous week. Thank you, app. Yeah, it was the I believe a Friday loss to San Francisco, and then a Saturday loss to the Los Angeles Valiant. It was our first battle for LA in years ever since uh, the Valiant came back across the pond. And it was dropped in a map five. And to be fair, the Valiant are looking better. The Valiant are doing better than they've been before. Additionally, what the Gladiators did over the break was drop Dante, which kind of has me going, come on, guys, Dante, really? And for those going, who the hell is Dante? He was their tank. He is basically, the tank is the tent pole of the team, especially since we have one tank in Overwatch 2 as opposed to a double tank lineup that we had in Overwatch 1. So you center a lot of play around your tank. A lot of cohesion, a lot of what you do depends on how is your tank playing, what's the strategy, where are they, what are they doing? Dante was very, very good at running with the team, and through that first half of the season, they were very familiar with him. Dante and the Gladiators parted ways over the break, and the Gladiators recruited Marvel, who I believe he was on the San Francisco Shock beforehand. He's he's had a history in the Overwatch League. We're also looking at a Winston meta, and Marvel's Winston is solid. The problem is Marvel is still in, I believe, South Korea right now, so he's playing on ping, which generally means delayed reactions in the game and it's also a brand new tent pole for the team so the gladiators aren't pulling together as nicely as one would hope around a tank that presumably has a better hero pool for the meta that we're in but is not currently able to bring the same team effect that Dante was able to bring as a tank, as that focal point, being very vocal, being able to pull the team together as needed. So it's an adjustment period, but it's an adjustment period that means that they are the team that has given the Valiant their very first win this season. No one wants to be that team. If there's a team that goes winless for that long, no one wants to be the first one to fall. So it's a very rough week for the Gladiators. Um, Speaking of winless teams... We are still looking at the Vegas Eternal. And again, we had two difficult matches for them this week, but they're looking better. 
We've had a little bit of roster switch arounds. They actually lost Luke Mino to, I want to say it's New York. I don't remember. But they still have good old Rack Attack on their side. And Rack Attack is an amazing support. So Paris, Paris, I keep calling them Paris. <laughs> Vegas is definitely one to keep an eye on. They are doing better. I would not be surprised if they finally do take that match before the end of this season. There's not going to be any postseason for them. There's not going to be any postseason for the Valiant. There's not going to be any postseason for teams who are only just now starting to pull in map wins and match wins because it's cumulative. How well did you do over the course of the season? We're going to have a postseason for the Reign, who are still undefeated after two matches this weekend. Of course they are. They're the Atlanta Reign. We're going to have postseason for Boston and Florida and Houston. We're going to have postseason for the Sullen Infernal, the Hongshou Spark. Like, we're going to have postseason for these teams that are consistently performing well. We're not going to have postseason for the teams that are consistently performing poorly. It's going to be those teams in the middle that are going to reach that really interesting, like, how are you going to do what's going to happen? Cut off your London Spitfires, your Dallas Fuels, your, we thought the Gong Guangzhou Charge was a top team, and then they had a really rough weekend. So, it's going to be those middle of the pack teams that are going to be really interesting to watch because some are more upper middle and then there are some where it's going to be individual map differences that are going to be the cutoff between participation in postseason and going home till season six. So we've started. We've started the second half of our season. We've announced a location for the grand finals. They're going back to Toronto, the location of last year's, I want to say it was either the summer show showdown or the midseason madness last year was in Toronto. They're going back there for the grand finals. It's the weekend of September 30th. So, you know, book your plane tickets, check your passport, all that fun stuff. I will not be going. I'm booked that weekend already, <laughs> but it looks fun. Toronto is a good place to be. They've got a solid stadium. They've got a solid team this year. So they're one of those middle of the pack teams where it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. They did win the battle for Canada against the Vancouver Titans in a, I want to say a map five this weekend, a lot of map fives this weekend. So we started off this half of the season with a bang. We will see where we go from here. I really need my teams to pull it together. <laughs> uh, yep. I was going to say, I'm like, and eh, nope, I don't got a good pun transition there. No, nope, um, <laughs> no, nope, we don't. We, it's hard it's to like, come back from the despair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, from the, you I'm, doing okay? No, no, but I will be. I'll be the person waiting in the panel rooms, watching the matches on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've hung out with a friend who's watched football games on mute. Well, I'm, it's like, I'll drive so she can watch the game. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I will be in the backseat yeah. of the carpool on Sunday checking scores. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was looking over at our live chat. Thank you, everybody, who joined us earlier on. Uh, yeah. We had Giga Derek say greetings. Yes. And then uh, we also had John Knight saying hello, ladies. Today's National Voice After Day. Okay, nice. All right. Good for them. Um, thank you for stopping by as well as the other folks who are just silently watching. It's all right. We see you. Uh, we, we appreciate love you. you. We love you. Uh, and a huge thank you to all of our guests who joined us. Uh, this was a fun Comic-Con packed episode. Uh, I'm even more excited. This is a annual tradition that I just love so much. And it's really the people. Like, that's the biggest draw is, like, there could be nothing happening. But it's that adult summer camp that you're seeing these friends you haven't seen in a really long time. So, yeah. uh, everybody, be safe. Have a good yes. time. Uh, say hello if you see us down there. Yeah. Say hi. We'll be posting stuff on our own channels, which, where, yeah, Katie, where can people find you uh, as well? You can follow me all over the social medias as well as on YouTube and Twitch at Kiaxet. That is K-I-A-X-E-T. That's over here. You can see that there. Uh, yeah. If you like reaction videos, um, et cetera. I had more on the list, but the brain's not there. So reaction videos, et cetera, they live on that channel. I have one in the can that's coming out soon, a reaction to the Red vs. Blue trailer for the final season, because we're getting another season of Red vs. Blue, you guys. Holy cow. Uh, so that'll be on the channel soon enough. 
I am also a co-host on Silver Screams, a YouTube channel I do with my roommate all about horror things. So check that out. We have some fun stuff on there. Yes. Yes. Uh, then you all can find me online at Carrie D Lane. That's K A R I D L A N E. Uh, across all social media webs. I was like, is there something in particular? I'm like, no, nothing super recent, but uh, stay tuned for more interview things uh, as well as check here on the Fanversation channel. Uh, we have awesome interviews by Katie uh, from Anime Expo. Stay tuned for our Comic-Con interviews. Yeah. Those will be up whatever they happen to be. We shall see. Um, yes. But as well as just general stuff, we'll be posting that on the Fanversation uh, sites as well as the NTATNB, Twitter, and um, some... Bernie was at the beginning. It's B-E-R. Um, no, no, no. That's oh. a red versus blue <laughs> thing. <laughs> Okay. Yes, Bernie is back. He's writing the season and Matt is directing. We are throwing back. Well, that's my thank you. Then my tie in to that <laughs> is thank you to all of our special guests yes. who joined us. Uh, yeah, there's my, I don't know, red versus blue. Um, no, that's, I've been in this for so dang long. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> I live here now. Don't yeah. forget you're here forever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our special guests for joining us. It was fun talking yes. about Comic Con. Uh, yeah. Reach out to us to let us know what you're excited about. Leave comments down below. And if you're not going to Comic Con, what kind of stuff do you really want to see? Is it more pictures of cosplay? Is it more activations? Let us know because then we can make sure to post that kind of stuff for all of you. Yeah. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for watching and tuning in. And stay tuned. We'll let you know when our next yeah. episode will be. If it's not on Monday, it'll be the next week. So yeah. we'll be Keep back. We're on. not going anywhere. Yeah. Keep an eye on that Twitter. We'll let you know. We mm -hmm. may not know until day before or day of, yeah. but we will let you know. <laughs> we can't feel when we get we home. Of our the future. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to want to do anything on Monday, but I will do it for you guys if we are yeah, up for it. We're happy so, to be here for all we'll of figure you. Figure it out. There we go. Little hearts. Oh, wait. Um, I was doing it with my friend of the, yes, like the kids do. That no. they just me. <laughs> <laughs> like the old folk do. I'm like, oh, how do you? Oh man, that just sounds. Yes, make it lame. But hey, it's it's muscle memory. We'll get there eventually. It's easier. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you everybody for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.